Education has flourished in the Rochford Bridge area since the 5th century. St. Bridget is said to have visited the place, now known as Kilbride, and to have set up a church and a centre of education there. The place name, Kilvrida, was given to the area, and it is from this title that our present school got its name, Skullvrida. The old map of Fertulla from 1756 shows evidence of a church still in existence in Kilbride. During penal times, Catholic education was suppressed. Hedge schools were situated in Old Town, where a lady named Biddy Piggott taught, Nucru, under the care of a teacher named Ehan, and here, at Bona Boring in Kilbride. The school was situated in the corner of the field, on the right-hand side, just as you turn in at the Boring. These schools were just mud-walled cabins with thatched roofs. The children sat on sods of turf and used elderberry ink. The school at Kilbride remained on after the penal laws were abolished. It was upgraded to a stone-walled thatched building. Miss Anne Farley, a relative of the Garrity's in Old Town, taught here from 1887. Sean Brennan, who lives in the area, in this house nearby, remembers the footbridge which led into the school. At the turn of the century, the school was burned down. Legend tells us that a pupil was smoking a clay pipe. He hid it in the turf box, and it caused the building to burn down during the night. Catholic emancipation was granted in 1829. Rochford Bridge Boys School was established in 1830. It was situated on the Dublin Galway Road at the western end of the village where Tom Newman's front lawn now stands. All that remains today is the old stone pier which was at the corner of the wall which surrounded the school. It was a long, low building with just one classroom. It was heated by turf and sticks and had a tall red brick chimney. There was a dry toilet outside. There was a ball alley at the back with a timber wall and concrete floor. The boys played football on the road. The principal teacher was Thomas Brady. He was followed by James Gleason. James Graham, Peter Ledwith, Daniel O'Connor, Michael Rohn, and Vincent Foley. Around 1920, the classroom was divided and an assistant teacher came. The school was closed in 1949 when the new school was built. This is Edward Monaghan, our oldest living past pupil. And here, in our register is where Edward arrived at our school on the 1st of the 7th, 1915. What are your memories of the school itself, Ed? Well, the first year I went to school to the convent. Right. To the nuns. And then you moved up to the boys? Yes, yeah, we moved up to the boys' school. Was there only one teacher then? Only one teacher. I think Peter Ledwich was there. Peter Ledwich, yeah. I see. And was there only one classroom? Only one classroom, yeah. And what kind of desks had you that time? Oh, well, the ordinary desks, plain desks. Ordinary desks. Yeah. I believe in the older schools, they only had sods of turf to sit on, but you had ordinary desks. Oh, well, we had ordinary desks, wasn't that bad? <laughs> Good. <laughs> and no. Uh, there was only uh, one classroom, you say? One classroom, yeah. Right. And did that teacher remain there as long as you were there? No, he was moved out of it. He wasn't... Well, he wasn't a real... I didn't like him on it. He was a cross. Right. And who came then? He was fond of the beer. I see. 
<laughs> and who came then? A man by the name of Connor. It didn't go too long to him, but he was a, a nice man. A Mr. And Connor? Yeah, he was very nice man. I see. And... He wasn't as hard with the rod as Ludwig. Right. And what kind of a building was it? It would be a st stone built with lime and sand, I think. Right. Mm. And it was a long, low building, wasn't it? A long, it? low building, one big chimney on one side of us. On right. The left hand side of it, if you go up to. And you had an open fire, I suppose. An open fire, yeah. Turf and stakes. Great, yes. Yes. Turf and stakes. Right. Yeah. So, have a kind of toilet facilities where there was there a toilet outside? Oh, indeed, there was a great toilet. I see. That's your memory of it. Right. Yeah. And there was a stone over the door of that school. Do you remember what date was written on that? Well, no, I couldn't tell you about that. No. I think it no. was 1830. Could be. Yes. There was about a half an acre of a garden at the back of the school. Right. And there was an old ball alley there, but it wasn't in use in my time. I see. It was the remains of a ball alley. Right. <laughs> yes, I think there was an old photograph taken in that ball alley. Someone has a, an old photograph that was taken yeah. there. But it would have been after your time. Oh, it could be, yeah. Did you play football in the school in those days? We used to play on the road. Right. I it see. an old red ball was tied up with toy. <laughs> I see. On the road. It was on the road, yeah. And used to play at the back of the school as well? Very, very seldom. Generally on the road we used to play. I yeah. see. And the school was very near the road, wasn't it? It was very near the road, yeah. And very there was a wall in front, was there? There was, yeah. A high wall? No, a low wall. A low wall. wall. A low wall. Right. So, when did you leave that school, Ned? Oh. I suppose um, about 1923, was it? I don't know how I think it would be before 1923. I see. And have you any other memories? Who was there with you? Who, who were your companions? We have... Um, no. It was a Jim Martford and a Frank McMartin. Right. James Bradbourne. Yes. And Vern Garland. Was there Morris Highland? Morris Highland. He died here not too long ago. That's right. Yeah. And there's a John Anderson here, do you remember? John him? Anderson, yeah, he's dead too. Edward Kenny. Edward Kenny, yeah. He's gone as well. Christy Healy. Christy Healy. And Jack Daly. Jack Daly. And there was Andy Kyo. Andy Kyo, yeah. And there was a James Kenny from Old Town. James, yeah, that's right. Remember him? Yeah. And John Garland. John from, Garland from the park. That's right. And... James Carey. Was that Father Carey? Who yeah. went on to be Father yeah, well, Carey? Well, I didn't go to school with him. But right, so those ones were your companions. There's a Richard Garland here. Where you yeah, Richard Garland. And, and Dick Garland. And Thomas Goldsberry. Tom Goldsberry, yeah. Right. And Patrick Earl. Patrick Earl. Yes, it's E-A-R-L-E. -E. Earl, or Earley, would it be? I can't place him, no. No. Rochford Bridge is down as the address. Early, probably. Oh, maybe it's early. Did it McCabe's come from? Knocked it in. Right. And that's all that's on this page now, so I suppose the ones on the rest of the pages came after your time. Oh, probably, yeah. Yes. We haven't got the book that comes before you. Um, there's one page here, though, perhaps you might remember somebody in it. Um, yes, there's Patrick McCabe, Edward Gavin. Do you remember that? Edward Gavin. No, no. Michael Fox. Michael Fox. This was Dr. Fox. Oh. No, Peter Fox. No, this was a Michael now from Rochford Bridge. That wasn't Peter. No. No. So they he must did. have been all gone. No, the, the Foxes you came. mean, they could be from the park. Yes. I can tell them, don't that public house probably where let's to live no. Right. Yes, there's a Michael Fox shopkeeper, all right. That's yeah. probably... They own the public house. Yeah. I see. 
there's a Patrick Carley. Do you remember him? Carley. No, Carley. C A R L E Y Carley. Patrick Carley. I knew him too. Yeah. I see. And Edward Carey from Meaden. From Meaden. Hmm. That might be from Davies Town area now, maybe. Edward Carey. It has down Edward Carey. Yes. It was from Old Town. Would it be from Old Town? Wouldn't it be a relation of you? Right. So I didn't think he was that age, but I suppose he was. Edward Carey. Yes, sir. Ned Carey, who was in the bridge. Yes. Well, yes. I went to school with him. I see. And there's Frank McMahon now. Frank you, McMahon. You mentioned Frank McMahon, did, didn't you? Yeah. Yes. And Maliki Gavin. Maliki Gavin. He's not too long dead either. Right. Thomas O'Brien from the crew. Uh, yeah, yeah. I remember him well, too. Right. He used to play football with the bridge. I see. And John O'Brien from the crew. Yeah. Probably a brother. Joe. There's a James Dunn from Gibbonstown. Yeah, I remember James Dunn too. Right. And Michael Carley. Mick Carley. Yeah, I remember him too. Yeah. Right. And there was a Michael Flynn from Drummond. Do you remember Flynn him? from Drummond. I can't guess him, no. And Patrick Boyhan from Rochford Bridge, a blacksmith. Yeah. Do you remember him? Yeah. Patrick Kyo from Rochford Bridge. Yeah. I suppose he was father of Jack Kyo, maybe. Yeah, probably. And Joseph Daly, Rochford Bridge, do you remember? Yeah. Uh, Daly. Right. And I suppose that's probably all that were your time of day. That was be all around my time, yeah. About how many were in the school at that time? I don't know, it's supposed to be 30, maybe more. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be sure now, no. About 30. About 30. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much, Ned. No, I don't mention it. It's much. wonderful to hear all those old memories. The new school was built in the corner of Ian's Field on the Castle Lost Road. Skullvreda was officially opened on Monday, the 7th of March. 1949. It was blessed by Most Reverend Dr. Kine, Bishop of Mead, assisted by the parish priest Father Gilmartin, Father Delaney and Father McKeever. The new school had two classrooms, teachers and children's toilets and open fires. There was a colonnade outside where the children played on wet days. A high water tower at the end of the colonnade supplied water to the school. On opening day, the teachers and children marched from the old school to the new one, bringing the roll books with them. Mr. Foley was the principal teacher and Miss McGill was the assistant. There were 32 children on rolls.
O'Riordan came as principal in 1951. In 1977, the school became a three-teacher establishment. Teachers through the 70s and 80s were Ray Scully, Rita Clark and Sean O'Riordan. The school was extended and renovated between 1982 and 1985. The extension was officially opened and blessed in November 85 by Bishop Smith. There was now a PE hall, teacher's room, eight toilets, an office, two new classrooms, and the original classrooms were converted into one big classroom. Things had certainly changed from the old school in Bona Boring. Boards of management and parents' councils now play an important part in supporting our school. In 1995, these boys, Morris Fallon, Mark Glennon, Francis Kenny and Rory Wright, won a computer in the Irish Independent Urban Rural Day competition. The idea of a computer room was born. In 1996, an old cloakroom was converted into this computer room. The telephone was installed in 1997. We went on the internet in 1998. Our school is renowned for its interest in quizzes. The boys have made a tradition of winning the Mullingar Deanery Pioneer Quiz, starting in 1992 with Derek O'Reilly, Jude Doyle, David Horgan and Brian Fallon. In 1993 we had Francis Heavey, Kevin Dunn, Brian Fallon, Morris Fallon and Paul Burke. In 1994, Brian Wright, Kevin Dunn, Connor Gately and Morris Fallon. In 1995, the boys reached the All-Ireland of the Pioneer Total Abstinence Association quiz and it was won by Declan Gavin, Joe Bradley, Daniel Kelleher, Morris Fallon and John Alford. The boys of 96 followed in their footsteps and again had success in the All-Ireland. Kieran Fallon, John Gavin, Declan Gavin, Conor Ehan and John Alford. In 1997, the boys won the Castle Lost Credit Union quiz. They were John Paul Fox, David Byrne, James Kenny, and John Peppard. They then went on to win the Mullingar Deanery Pioneer quiz with the help of T.P. Fallon. The tradition was kept up in 1998 by Robert Kenny, T.P. Fallon, John Peppard, Colm Geraghty, and John Paul Fox. In 1995, we took part in the Works Quiz, and this was won by Kieran Fallon, Declan Gavin, John Alford, and Conor Ehan. In 1998, the boys reached the All-Ireland Final of the Credit Union Schools Quiz. They were T.P. Fallon, John Peppard, John Paul Fox, and Cahal Farrell. The 1998 Westmeath Environmental Quiz was won by Damien Keegan, T.P. Fallon, Paul Kehoe and Cahal Farrell. The Christian faith has always been nurtured in our schools. Father Andy Garrity died in Nigeria at the age of 29. Missionary priests today who are past pupils are Father Tony Boyhan and Father Liam Carey, both of whom are working in Brazil. Common Luclas Gale has been fostered in our schools from very early days. There was football and handball in the old school in Cartis Field. In the 1930s, Father O'Farrell presented a cup which was competed for by the local schools. It was won in 1938 by these stalwarts. The boys had a hurling team in 1961. <laughs>
combined with Terence Pass School in the 60s and they won the Comorts de Munskull titles three times. Skullvrida has had tremendous success in Comorts de Munskull in the 90s. In 1990 the boys reached the final. From this team came Damien Gavin the captain of the first Westmead minor team to win in All-Ireland. The new football pitch behind the school has been a tremendous help in the development of our game. In 1992, the boys won the Comortes de Munskull final for the first time in 27 years. This success was continued through the 90s. Miss Michelle Dardis, who came as the assistant teacher to the school in 1987, has played a major role in the training of these successful teams. Mm -hmm. 